Here's my turn. Second gear, little front brake. Oh, so nice. Nobody's coming. I'll be able to hit this nice. Oh, boy. Uh, the engine braking is really smooth. Now, granted, I'm not dropping two gears here. This is a demo ride. And I don't want to crank out the bike first person out of the gate. Really just trying to get a feel for it. Experience all it is. You know, below 70 miles an hour. That's the thing. only thing I worry about with demo bikes is if somebody during the break-in period has gotten out and really wound it up and abused it. Oh, I like to think most people are conscientious enough to uh, treat a bike that's not theirs with a little respect. It is so smooth. I'm still getting that vibration in the handlebar, though. Betcha. It's, it's not enough to bother me. You know? It's a motorcycle, so I don't think it's that big a deal. But I bet you that's something that people are going to complain about. I remember that was one of the big complaints about the S1000XR was it was buzzy in the handlebars. I think if you're experiencing vibration on this, just, you know, speed up a little bit and shift up a gear. Because, man, it's nice. The suspension, that was a pretty bumpy section of road. And uh, the suspension was decent. I didn't feel a lot of shocks to my lower back. And I'm a heavy dude. You know, you guys see me on these videos. You know I'm a big dude. And uh, a lot of times with bikes like this style, the rear suspension is so low and undersprung that the uh, shocks from the road just go straight up through your spine. That's not at all the case. I haven't hit any hard bumps, but over that little uh, asphalty washboard back there, not difficult at all, not uncomfortable. I feel like you could definitely go along 55, 60 miles an hour on this thing all day long in comfort and with ease. So I'm betting that uh, rock mode on this corresponds to sport mode on most other bikes with riding modes. Yeah, right back to exactly where I thought I would be. We'll cruise it around the parking lot a little bit, see what that's like. There's Classic Iron. My brother-in-law works there, not that you guys care. But he's a tip-top motorcycle mechanic. I wish I had time to uh, go show him this bike. Make this turn here. And we'll go into the parking lot and uh, roll around at low speed a little bit. So like a lot of bikes that have uh, throttle by wire, there's a tiny, tiny little snatch just off idle. Something that you got to basically just get yourself used to. Most bikes have it. And it doesn't do it all the time, so it's probably mostly my throttle technique. But yeah, parking lot, parking lot's not all that bad. I mean, I can feel that the bike is heavy, but it doesn't mind. I'm not doing sharp figure eights or rolling through cones or anything, but it definitely is not difficult to steer at low speed. So that's a plus. The R1200C was pretty easy to run at low speed. The CL was a little more difficult because it had that big frame-mounted fairing. Yeah, that was, uh, that was quite the enjoyable demo ride there. And uh, I think this bike is going to sell really well because it is really fantastic.
easy to back up. That's because your feet are so close to the ground. All right, we'll hit the stop button and the power button and see if we can find this kickstand. There it is. Very long kickstand. What's that? Yeah, <laughs> they're not coming for me. I was a good boy. It's uh, it's really impressive. It's very smooth. It's very composed. It feels exactly like a cruiser should, except your feet are a little closer to you than you expect. Uh, I left it in roll mode most of the time, and uh, at a stoplight, I put it in the rock mode, which gives you a little bit more, uh, a little more immediate throttle response. It's not a huge difference. It, uh, it faulted on the key. But it didn't quit or anything, and I just didn't wasn't going to turn it off. So, yeah. you want to put it in neutral? Yeah, sure. That's it for part four. Thanks for uh, hopefully you watched all four parts. This is a repeat of the tour of the bike from the first part. So uh, if you're if you've watched all four parts, you're getting another tour, just showing off the bike a little bit. There's the oil cooler. And the exhaust, you can see the exhaust header right there, the front brake, the nice uh, spoked wheel, LED headlight, which is a trendy but highly useful thing, a nice view of the front of the bike. It doesn't look as wide as you think it should for how big the engine is, but the, the cylinders stick out a good ways. There's the turn signal mirror clutch cluster. You see the hose lines look very clean and go right to uh, a hard point. There's a good view of the kickstand, the left side foot controls, the cylinder, the air tube, the exhaust, which is large. The first edition badging that shows you that it's a first of the generation. There's the rear brake. You can see the ABS ring and the brake disc. Nice pinstriping, nice seat. I realize one thing I didn't show you here is the open drive shaft, that subtle BMW badging and the really nice vintage looking pinstriping there on the rear fender. There's a view from the back of the bike to the front. That little bag on the handlebars, the dealership put on there as a place to put the key so they didn't have to worry about anybody uh, dropping the key or going home with it after a demo ride. Just a little example of how big the cylinder is compared to my foot. That's a, a size 14 boot there. I appreciate everybody coming and checking out the video. Um, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave comments. We'll be bringing you some more videos on the R18 as soon as we can. Um, we got to wait in line for to ride one just like everybody else. And uh, there's a little view of the right side cluster for setting high, medium, low, off on the hand grip heater, power button, start, stop button. Thanks for joining us here on the YouTube channel for the BMW Motorcycle Owners of America. Ride safe.